So I want to talk about using the graphs of functions to answer questions. So let's work with this example. We have the graph of the function f of x equals x minus 3 quantity squared minus 1. And it's given to us in the bottom right here. So part A, they say in function notation, can you evaluate f of 3? Now I want you to take a moment and remember, when someone says f of 3, 3 in the input box, what's being given? Who is 3 in this scenario? Is it being given to you that y is 3 or that x is 3? Okay, because of the position of the 3 in the input box where x usually lives, they're specifying that x is 3 and they want the corresponding y that goes with that. Now, you are welcome to plug 3 into this equation, calculate, 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 and report back the output as a result of those calculations. And I tell you that a lot of these problems will be easier to solve if you use that graph that's been given to you. Let's see how we can use the graph to answer this question. So I'm going to go into this graph and I'm going to look along the x-axis for the position where x equals 3. And that's this horizontal position here. x equals 3 is right here. And I have a point on the graph where x equals 3 and it's the point 3 comma negative 1. 3 comma negative 1. That tells me that if x is 3, the y that goes with that is minus 1. And so I can really just read that y coordinate off of this point, and I can say if x is 3, the y that's associated with that is minus 1. And that's all. Just look at the graph and use the graph. Let's try and solve part b in a similar way. Solve f of x equals 3. Now, what do you think this time? f of x equals 3, 3 on the far side of the equation. Who is being given to me now, x or y? Okay, given this time y equals 3, given an output outside value of 3, we want to correspond, we want to give back all the corresponding x's. And notice that I have said x is plural here. I've said x is plural because the possibility is great that there is more than one way to achieve this height of 3. So let me look in this picture for all the positions where y is 3. That's this height of 3 right here. And I can see two points on the graph at that height, one on the left and one on the right, one which has coordinates of, it looks like, 1 for x, 3 for y, and over here, 5 for x, and 3 for y. So they wanted the x values, which correspond to y equals 3, and so I will just list the x-coordinates of the points where y is 3. x could be 1, or where x could be 5. And I'll give both of those values with a comma between. It says, okay, can you give me the x-intercepts? Once again, you could go back into this formula, replace the output, replace the f of x with 0, but it might be easier if we went into the graph and we looked for the positions where the y value, where the output value was 0, positioning us on the x-axis. And I see two such points. Once again, we have two. One point at 2 itself and one point at 4. And so I would say the points 2, 0 and the points 4, 0. These are the points where the graph crosses the x-axis. 
And then they say, what about the x-intercept? And you could go into the formula and put zero into x's spot, but maybe it would be easier if we used the graph and we looked for a point on the graph that was also on the y-axis. And that point is located at a height of eight. So I could say the y-intercept for this graph is located at zero comma eight. We didn't have to do any calculations at all. We didn't have to solve any equations manually. We just had to look at the picture.